so I, I never um, considered stopping drinking. I had moments where I was a functional alcoholic. Functioning or functional? Functioning alcoholic. And I've had family members who were non-functioning alcoholics uh, uh, living on the street and just living um, not very well. So um, I was always of the belief that if I was a functioning alcoholic, Ooh, you know what's the big deal well you can't you could be a functioning alcoholic for so long and then you're dead and a dead person's not functioning as far as I'm you know aware of maybe I don't know so um, I started to get like some problems I thought I was getting pancreatitis it's getting like nauseous and shit and I was like what the hell is this and I have to tell you I stopped in April and I feel better than I've ever felt um, I used to bend down like at a certain angle and it would like hurt, like, but I got used to it. So I was like, Ugh. so now when I bend down, um, in that same angle and it doesn't hurt, I'm like, Oh, bonus. So you got that going for you. Then I lost a lot of weight. And if you look at videos and I, I'm kind of glad I did my YouTube channel because it gives me the opportunity to go back and look at myself. And I know a lot of people are, you know, uh, have express that oh well you you like to watch yourself yes i like to watch myself isn't that what you're supposed to do hey watch it you know hey you better uh check yourself before you wreck yourself right isn't that what the kids say or they used to like 15 20 years ago um and yes you have to check yourself and before you wreck yourself literally um but if you look at my older videos my skin is so fucked up I mean, I had acne as a teen back in the 80s, um, but, you know, in my 40s, should my face be like, should I have all these things on my face? I mean, I know I'm a Caucasian guy with fair skin, but, like, why are there almost open sores on my fucking face and my nose? Why is my nose, like, you know, rah? and that was because of the alcohol, alcohol, and to be honest and to be serious, I mean, it's affected my life. My mother, and I posted recently some Christmas, you know, Super 8 movies. Um, one of those movies was 1976 Christmas. And there's a little section in there with my mom just walking through, um, you know, to go into the bedroom there. Um, that was the last fucking day I saw my mom alive. Because at 33 years old, she died on January 3rd. Um, 1977, so right after Christmas there, um, of alcoholism. Uh, the last time I saw her, she had yellow skin and yellow eyes, and she died on January 3rd uh, from drinking at 33 fucking years old. Okay? The same age as Jesus. You know, it was a little joke, but it's not funny because I was seven years old. And to have your mother taken away from you at that age is really rough. Now you'd think that after something like that happens, you say to yourself, boy, I'm never going to drink. That killed my mommy. I'm never going to drink. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, yeah, maybe, but sometimes no. And, of course, my father didn't handle things very well after that. And he was a traveling salesman, basically like a fucking Willie Lomax, death of a salesman. And this per you know, every time I saw that, I was like, or read the story, I was like, ah, that sounds a little familiar. Um, same kind of thing, traveling salesman, just uh, my father was a, a very bad alcoholic, but he was, um, he'd sit there at the kitchen counter, drink, and then, you know, cry himself to you know, and fall asleep at the uh, kitchen counter. And one of the things I like to say is, go to bed, because you would say, Dad, go to bed, come on, t go to bed. Uh, he'd be passed out in the kitchen, you know, and, and that's, okay, wouldn't that take, uh, you know, wouldn't you take notice of that and say, well, boy, I better not drink because I don't want to end up like Dad. That's fucked up. Mom's dead. Dad's, like, you know, in rough shape. Boy, but no, that didn't, that didn't stop it. You know, it's it's an, it's something uh, they say it's uh, inherited and and the like. But you'd think that uh, these type of things would would stop you in your tracks and be like, fuck, I better not touch that stuff. It's killed my family. 
no, 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 no. So it was always associated with a good time, um, but with the knowledge that it would eventually catch up to you. You know, that was the whole thing. It'll catch up to you. And I think it caught up to me. I know watching, you know, family members, you know, go down uh, the tubes really, uh, really uh, was a, a wake up call. But then losing friends, you know, I lost my friend Randy, who was a year younger than I was. We went to school, we were best buds, you know, and played music together. And um, I would spend Christmas, you know, they'd always have a Christmas party, him and his uncle and stuff and, at the house. And Randy died from alcohol. Um, a year before that, one of Randy's bandmates, another person died from alcohol. Um, so you start hearing the stories of people like, oh, yeah, you know, driving and he, he killed himself and uh, with the alcohol and or driving and getting in trouble with the law, drinking. And so it took like a few stories like that. But again, what do you say? Well, it's not going to happen to me, you know, like. But I, here's, here's what the bottom line is, okay? Here's the bottom line right here. This is the bottom line. Um, if you're over 50 and you're still drinking like you did when you were 30 uh, or 25 in the streets of Boston, you know, it's like having a good fucking time going, yeah, the fucking Red Sox, yeah, you're going to fucking die. Like, mm, probably in a few, couple, few years, you know? You want to live, if you're over 50 and you're still drinking like you did back then or even if just casual drinking and you partied big time back in the day i'd say you probably if you want to live to 60 or more you want to just kind of like maybe fucking stop and it's hard i did it cold turkey i don't know how i how i did it but i think it was just through the um thinking about my friends and family, and also with the aid of cannabis. Yes, cannabis saved my life. Let me tell you the story. Well, because anytime I felt like, you know, I, I want to get fucked up, I would just eat a couple gummies, you know, which are, are legal and everything, and I ate them responsibly, you know, eat responsibly, and, um, you know, wouldn't drive or anything. I still, I don't drive and, and smoke or do any of that. Um, but when I'm feeling that urge, you know, it's Friday night, well, you know, and I say, well, just let me, you know, smoke a little, sit down, relax, listen to music. Okay. That's what helped me get through the whole alcoholism thing. Um, and I'm still, I guess technically yeah, anyone who doesn't drink is, uh, but had a drinking problem is still an alcoholic. Or you say, I'm a recovering alcoholic. And the worst thing in the world to do is to shove AA in someone's face, okay? And I'm going to talk about this a little bit, but AA, uh, regardless of what they say, and they say a lot of things, AA does have a religious component to it, okay? And they say, well, it's a higher power. Okay, well, you know, there's a higher power of failure, apparently, because the uh, human race is falling apart, and I don't need to go over that again. But um, AA, and I went to a couple AA meetings, and... Again, it's like there's a, a Bill Hicks bit about this where it's like people are talking and the guy's like, I burned down my house and then I, uh, you know, I shot my dog and then I, uh, you know, and it's like, dude, I just drank too much and I didn't go to work once. And so you start going, you know, well, I don't, I'm not that bad, right? When I get to that point, I'm going to stop, right? Well, it's too fucking late at that point a lot for a lot of people. And if you're if you're burning down your house, you probably shouldn't like be anywhere near matches. I don't think alcohol is your problem. I think matches are your problem. Well, matches? Do they still make matches? I don't know. Lighters, okay? Can you light your house on fire with lighters? Well, I guess you could. Um, but what I'm saying is that uh, I made a joke out of everything, and so like uh, it didn't hit me when I went to AA. It didn't hit me. I was in Al-Anon. Is it Al-Anon? It was like an alcoholic thing for children um, with alcoholic parents. And I remember, like, they, at school, they asked me to go to these meetings. And I'm like, how do you know my parents are drinking, you know? I also had a stepmother, and she got into uh, pills as well as the booze. She ended up dying of a uh, fentanyl overdose because she was... She came to fentanyl through... And oxycodone, oxy, whatever, fucking oxy, 
um, it was through back injury problems. A lot of people come through with like heroin addiction, then they start going into the other things and they get into the pills. But it was a back injury, you know. And of course, back in that time, the doctors were like, hey, here you go, Merry Christmas. Scripts, 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 scripts. And of course, they've gotten in trouble for that. But that's how my stepmother died. She was also drinking a lot and using uh, pills. Um, but it was, uh, you know, so I've lost more than one family member from alcohol um, and from, you know, I guess, the hard drugs. I would never take hard drugs now, and I experimented as a, as a kid. Only I wouldn't even buy street weed because they're putting fentanyl in, in that. Um, and then that's why I'm very happy that I live in a state where uh, cannabis is legal and tested and um, it's it's you know, responsible smoking, and it's, you know, smoking is probably not the best thing in the world to do, and I don't mean to ramble here, but smoking, anything is kind of bad for your lungs. Um, just be careful, you know, always make, make sure to use your bong, or like I do, like um, the gummies. Gummies are awesome, okay? You use them carefully. I know they're delicious, you know, and I always thought, like, maybe it'd be funny if they made, if they, like, if uh, the state of Maine, you know, OCP, which is the Office of Cannabis Policy, if they all of a sudden declare that gummies have to taste horrible so you don't keep eating them, like, oops, you know, because um, they have all these laws about kids, uh, which is good. Uh, don't make the packaging too enticing to children. You know, that's why we don't have Joe Camel around anymore. Um, but if they made them taste like the, uh, what was those, Jelly Bellies that have like the the terrible flavors there's like a you know throw up and you know, <laughs> cat piss and shit like that and th that you wouldn't eat as many or something and and that's their solution to it um and speaking of cat piss you know it's funny how the 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 names of the strains of weed um are just hilarious i'd be i like to be that guy i was like um i don't know man what should we call it uh how about cheetah piss Okay, that's fucking weird, but all right. And then there is a, a, a strain of weed called cheetah piss, by the way. Um, but anyway, cannabis is something that, when used responsible, can help alleviate a lot of uh, stress and tension um, and also help me through uh, stopping alcohol. So thank you, weed. Okay? Um, that's one way to handle um, but it's it's good to get off the poison. <clears throat> poison! And this is, again, my first Christmas sober since the age of 16. Now, I'm 54 years old, and uh, 16 is a long time ago. So, um, I don't know. I don't have the, the, the brain capacity to uh, do the math. Maybe because I smoke weed. Um, but it, it's been a long time, okay? And 47 years? No. 37? I, don't ask me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, where's the calculator? I don't know. We used to have calculators on our watches, you know, our Casio watch. We have a calculator. It was a big deal. It's like, oh, I'm going to cheat in school. Now, of course, cheating in school is what they're supposed to do. Um, so, basically, I'll sign off now. I know I'm just rambling on and on, but it's the holiday season. I haven't felt like being in the holiday spirit. I did lose my job as I went over in my other video that I posted and I apologize if you know I'm talking too much and um, I just I just want to share things get them off my chest so to speak literally and figuratively um, because this is my only outlet you know I think it's cheaper than therapy and I don't have therapy because you know the uh, Insurance companies like, oh, yeah, we'll pay for uh, three sessions. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to fix all my fucking problems in three sessions. Thank you. I'm going to tell a total stranger all my fucking problems. And they're going to be like, uh, well, that's about all the time we have. You know. Um, so thank you for listening. If you've listened to this the, all the way through, um, there's a secret advent calendar. And you just have to open the little thing and you'll get a free piece of chocolate. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.